Are, are you aware of any scientific evidence that makes football an unsafe sport for the young men of America? I think what you're getting at here, Gerald, is something that's very important. And the thing, the thing that really we have to focus on here is it doesn't really matter whether or not our children will suffer br brain damage from football. The fact of the matter is our children, our millennial children, who we neglected for the vast majority of their childhoods, you know, we got divorced many, many times. I know I've had at least, I've had two divorces. As far as I know, you're on number three right now. So, I mean, our children, they need to understand that we don't care about what happens to the millennial generation. Overall, they are pussies because their bank accounts are much, much smaller than ours because they've been unable to grow up in a period of unrivaled success where the United States military effectively bombed the shit out of Europe and Japan, destroying all resistance to American capitalism worldwide for many, many decades. They, they will never know the easy prosperity we knew, the way we were able to buy and build homes with literally no problem whatsoever. And the fact of the matter is, the millennials are just a bunch of pussies. I mean, I think we all understand this. This is a real problem. Who cares about brain damage? If my son has to get brain damage to not be a pussy, to not be a left-wing faggot, then I'm totally okay with it. <laughs> we view ourselves as the apex, the very, <laughs> the very apex of, of evolution within the American tradition. We are the very, very top. We are the peak. We are the peak of the mountain. And so, in my opinion, people destroying themselves playing football, be it our children, our grandchildren, or strange Africans we've never met and never and never will meet, are things that must be done for the boomer generation's amusement, because I think that we've earned it. Much the way we've earned our overpriced 401ks and pensions that will be pretty much paid for by our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren, as our disgusting greed drives the West further and further into Bolivia. These pathetic millennial snowflakes, and I, 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 they, I urge that we call them snowflakes because that's what they are. No matter how strong their argumentation is, no matter how many facts they have behind their arguments, no matter how impoverished they may be because of the excesses of our generation, which was, of course, the real greatest generation, we must call them snowflakes because verbally belittling them is the way to understand their points of view and to well, make well, them let, stronger. Let me, let me interject here, Gerald, because I understand that verbally blitting our, blitting our children, or perhaps our children's generation is perhaps super important, but you and I have often had disagreements regarding this, which is simply to say that I believe that the best way to raise your children is through outright neglect. I mean, why bother belittling your children if you can pretend they don't exist while you watch the New York Giants and go golfing? Yes, your son might be getting terrible grades. Yes, he might be getting bullied at school. Yes, your daughter might be a total disgusting slut. But it doesn't matter. <laughs> if you're only concerned with your own hedonistic pleasures in real time, that's really the most important thing. Yes, no, no, nothing says you're a real American like ignoring your community, ignoring your wife, drinking yourself into an absolute stupor. And then when you lose complete control of your bowels, relying on medication from the massive pharmaceutical industry to regulate every system of your body, this is the American way. We have a real problem with the millennial generation. And of course, I, I spoke about ignoring the, the, the millennials because what else are we supposed to do than ignore our progeny here in the 21st century? Unless they remind us of the many, many failures we've had in our lives our failure to preserve our nation, our failure to, to keep our wives around, our failure to actually raise respectable children. These are all things that we have to, to, to pay attention to. The idea that every single millennial out there is going to be triggered by the simple usage of a caps lock shows what tremendous pussies they are. They will never have the things that we have had, a home, a family, Multiple families, really, if you think about the way we've swapped wives over the years, the way that perhaps, <laughs> the, the, as you alluded to before, the paternities of our generation. We, we, who even knows who's the mother or father of our children at a certain point? Things become very, very different. They become very, very murky. So I, I would agree. There's a real problem with the millennial generation. See, they, they haven't learned to live vicariously through Fox News the way you and I have. I mean, yes, we might be old. We might be out of shape. We might have low testosterone. We might be largely emasculated. But you tell me, Gerald, what made you feel more like a man back in the day than our hero, Bill O'Reilly, chastising the libs from the no-spin zone? Nothing. I don't even The answer is nothing. 
We, need, we boomers need to understand, we have to teach our children that neoconservatism is the way forward. We must advocate for as many foreign wars as possible because nothing makes me feel more like a man than the American military killing Arabs all the way across the world while I drink Budweiser and chase them with opioids. Now, these children, they grew up watching the Twin Towers collapse. They grew up and saw that there would be no social security for them. They saw that there would be no white population left in America by the time they reached maturity. And for them to be afraid of these things, I say no. I say no. You must behave like real Americans. Stuff all of your feelings deep into the bottommost region of your gut. Drown yourself in pharmaceuticals and watch a 36-hour marathon of Friends and Seinfeld. But let's not forget the importance of watching endless amounts of Holocaust documentaries. I mean, nothing speaks of real history more than watching things like Schindler's List and other, and, and other things that remind us of how terrible we are as white people and why we must sit down and self-flagellate in front of the Israelis as they defend their borders and our societies become completely destroyed. So I would agree, yes, Friends is important, Seinfeld is important. These are all important things that do describe really at the fundamental level who we are as a people and as a society. But let us go back to the 90s. Let's pick any... Any Holocaust documentary that was being played that week, because there were many back when we were in the peak Holocaust days. These were the finest days of the boomer generation. Okay, And I understand that if we don't sit down and, and give ourselves credit somehow, some way, for saving the poor Jewish people from the Germans, what type of people are we really? That's a fundamental question that needs to be asked. We boomers must always live vicariously through men like Steven Spielberg and how they, they portray amazing art about how all Anglo-Saxons all Caucasians must be sacrificed to save our friends, the Jews. And I know before we get all crazy here, I wanted to ask you about something. We had discussed previously before we went live today uh, about brewing problems in Iran. And I tell you what, there's nothing that makes me feel better aside from, of course, an idea of sniper blowing away a small child with his high caliber sniper rifle <laughs> than the very notion that we will have war with Iran. Now, I know, I remember where I was when the Iranian, when the Ayatollah put forth this revolution back in 1979. We spoke on the phone back then. We were both very, very upset. And we know, because we trust Trump more than anyone. We've been following this gentleman by the name of QAnon, who's been telling us some fantastic news and bits that have kept us from committing suicide. Now, what are your thoughts on all this news about the fact that Iran is now claiming they can hit American aircraft carriers in the Persian Gulf? Well, frankly, I think uh, Mr. B.B. Netanyahu, the greatest man to have ever lived, second only to Jesus Christ himself, but with a few more Palestinian scalps, maybe Mr. Netanyahu can climb above our great Lord. I think he should just hand the, uh, the Supreme uh, President, Mr. Donald Trump, a list of every nation that he would like to see wiped off the face of the planet with or without evidence. And we can immediately commence attacks too sweet because no country can allow to be, can be allowed to threaten the safety of Israel. Not so long as American lives are there to be risked to advance the cause of the Zionists. I myself, I, I do have to wonder, I mean, if we don't start World War III for Israel, what kind of nation are we really? I mean, we must really understand that the true measure of our manhood is how many brown people we bomb for the Jews. I mean, this is this is this is without question the real measure of boomer success. Of course, great intellectuals like Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity have told us this in in in, in many many. Uh, television shows and radio broadcasts that we've watched in the past, things that have really helped formulate who we are as people. I think, I, I, I think without question, but... To prove my fealty, I've actually turned my bedroom into a personal Holocaust museum, and I drag my three daughters, age six, age 12, and my newborn, every day for three hours, three whole hours of studying the terrible atrocities of those awful Germans whose asses we kicked so badly all the way back in 1944. Who would you prefer? 
Ronald Reagan, the man who unleashed the beauty of unfettered global capitalism on America by turning California blue forever and giving amnesty to millions and millions of illegal Mexicans who came over our border, or Donald Trump, who continues to betray most of his campaign promises, but makes us feel really strong and tough through many of his mean tweets. Oh, do you feel the same pride that I feel? Because I am struck with pride when I see people like Tupac Shakur and Brandy wearing their MAGA hats out in public. Does it make you feel so good to see the white population in America being replaced by colorblind conservatism as really anyone who puts on a MAGA hat is someone we are willing to kneel in front of and genuflect just to prove to our community at large that we're not racist? Now, (laughs) clearly, because the most important thing is the paperwork you fill out before you enter a country. Clearly, ethnic replacement is totally okay if you simply fill out the correct paperwork. At the end of the day, and I can't speak for Gerald Brockheim on this, but I have a strong understanding of where he's at psychologically. The real problem with the caravan is not that they are low IQ, third world shitholers, packed full of Honduran gang members who want to rape my daughter. Because at the end of the day, much like much like Mr. Brockheim has pointed out, I have no problem with an Hispanic man having sex with my daughter as long as he's wearing a MAGA hat. I think we can understand this is the most important thing. So without question, it's not who you are as a person. It's not your IQ. It's not your cultural history. It has nothing to do with that. If you fill out the correct paperwork and you get that passport that says USNA, you are welcome in my country. You are an American because we boomers are ultimately colorblind. We don't see color. And as we know, at the end of the day, race is only color. We discussed back then that color doesn't matter. Race doesn't matter. And in fact, we don't particularly care if our grandchildren or even our children fundamentally, as, as explained to you by the questionable paternal paternity test regarding our own families, we don't care if our children look like us. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you care about the Constitution. What matters is that you side with Israel, and what matters is that you put on that bright red MAGA hat when you wake up in the morning. 